And now, your Idaho real estate news. You have a buyer who would like to assign their interest in purchasing a property to someone else. Why would you want to do it? Can you do it? And finally, how should you do it? This is Mike Johnston, contributing editor for Idaho Real Estate News. This week, we will cover real estate contract assignments in Idaho. Let's pretend that you have a buyer, Mr. B, who makes an offer on a property. The offer is accepted and all required signatures have been collected. The buyer has filled out the agency disclosure brochure, a buyer representation agreement, RE14, the real estate purchase and sell agreement, RE21, counter offer number one, RE13, exhibit A, the inspection contingency notice, RE10, the seller's property condition disclosure, RE25, and a lead-based paint disclosure. All of these were completed by all parties to the transaction. A few weeks prior to closing, Mr. B loses his job and can no longer qualify for the loan. The lender suggests that he be removed from the contract and that his father, Mr. C, purchase the property as an, inve as an investment and then allow him to live there. To have this happen, what needs to be done? First off, can the offer be assigned? Parties to a contract may transfer their rights and obligations to other people through an assignment or delegation. An assignment involves a transfer of contract rights. A delegation involves the appointment of another to perform one's duties under a contract. What types of contracts cannot be assigned? The three types of contracts that cannot be assigned are one, contracts that include an assignment restriction, two, assignments prohibited by law or public policy, and three, contracts that require personal service. The burden of a contract can never be assigned without the consent of the other party to the contract, in which event such consent will give rise to a novation. Conceptually, therefore, there is no such thing as an assignment of obligations. Before we discuss Idaho code, let's mention why a buyer or seller may or may not want to have the contract be assignable. In today's market, prices are continuing to go up. If a buyer has a contract to purchase a property at 100,000, and since the contract was written, it is now worth 120,000, then the buyer is most likely wanting to continue with the contract. The seller, however, may be inclined to let the contract fail in order to accept a new offer that would reflect the current market value of the property and would get him $20,000 more. See the difference depending on which side you're on? If the contract is failing on behalf of the original buyer due to some financing concerns, for example, he would most likely want to find a way to keep the transaction together. If the contract allowed him to assign it, he most likely would. The seller, on the other hand, may not like the contract to be assigned. They may know nothing about the new buyer's capability to perform, or they may not want to continue with the sale in the event the property is worth more than what the original contract was agreed to. Idaho Code 28-2-210, Delegation of Performance, Assignment of Rights, reads, one, a party may perform his duty through a delegate unless otherwise agreed or unless the other party has a substantial interest in having his original promissor perform or control the acts required by the contract. No delegation of performance relieves the party delegating of any duty to perform or any liability for breach. Number two, except as otherwise provided in section 28-9-406, unless otherwise agreed, all rights of either seller or buyer can be assigned except where the assignment would materially change the duty of the other party or increase materially the burden or risk imposed on him by his contract or impair materially his chance of obtaining return performance. A right to damages for breach of the whole contract or a right arising out of the assignor's due performance of his entire obligation can be assigned despite agreement otherwise. Three, the creation, attachment, perfection, 
or enforcement of a security interest in the seller's interest under a contract is not a transfer that materially changes the duty of or increases materially the burden or risk imposed on the buyer or impairs materially the buyer's chance of obtaining return performance within the purview of subsection two of this section, unless, and then only to the extent that, enforcement actually results in a delegation of material performance of the seller. Even in that event, the creation, attachment, perfection, and enforcement of the security interest remains effective. But one, the seller is liable to the buyer for damages caused by the delegation to the extent that the damages could not reasonably be prevented by the buyer. And two, a court having jurisdiction may grant other appropriate relief, including cancellation of the contract for sale or an injunction against enforcement of the security interest or consummation of the agreement, of the enforcement. Four, unless the circumstances indicate the contrary, a prohibition of assignment of the contract is to be construed as bearing only the delegation to the assignee of the assignor's performance. Five, an assignment of the contract or of all my rights under the contract or an assignment in similar general terms is an assignment of rights and unless the language or the circumstances as in an assignment for security indicate the contrary, it is a delegation of performance of the duties of the assignor and its acceptance by the assignee can, constitutes a promise by him to perform those duties. This promise is enforceable by either the assignor or the other party to the original contract. Six, the other party may treat an, any assignment which delegates performance as creating reasonable grounds for insecurity and may without prejudice to his rights against the assignor demand assurances from the assignee, section 28-2-609. That is from Idaho law. So a contract can be assigned as long as the parties have not already agreed to not let the contract be assigned, an assignment restriction. The Idaho Association of Realtors form, the RE21, Real Estate Purchase and Sell Agreement, in paragraph 39, assignment says, quote, this agreement and any rights or interest created herein may or may not be sold, transferred, or otherwise assigned, end quote. If this is marked, may not, then the parties have already agreed to not let the contract be assigned. This is an assignment restriction. Note, this does not mean that the parties could agree to modify the contract and allow an assignment, but to keep it simple, the parties are not obligated to accept an assignment under this paragraph. If the parties have agreed to allow an assignment, we need to modify the existing contract by removing buyer B and by adding buyer C in his place. The Idaho Association of Realtors have a form called the RE29 Assignment of Buyer's Interest. I do not recommend using just this form alone and I will explain why. The form is intended to make it simple for one party, the assignor, the original buyer, to transfer all of the rights and interest to the contract to another party, the assignee, the subsequent buyer, within this one document. It states that the new buyer, the assignee, has received and understands the agency disclosure brochure. It states that unless an exclusive buyer representation agreement is entered into, then the broker is acting as a non-agent for the assignee. It says that an addendum may need to be approved and signed by the seller and if the seller refuses to sign the addendum, then the original buyer must either continue with the terms of the purchase agreement or be in default. This form is only signed by the original buyer and the subsequent buyer. There is nothing showing that the seller has become aware of this change to the contract and any modifications this document makes. There must be a better way. That said, I would suggest that you consider that you simply modify the existing contract as follows. Prepare an addendum, the RE11 addendum, that removes the original buyer from the contract and replaces them with the subsequent buyer. For example, quote, Mr. B is to be removed as the buyer and Mr. C will replace him as the only buyer in this transaction, end quote. Have the seller, as well as the original buyer, Mr. B, sign the addendum agreeing to the change. 
Here, Mr. B agrees to be removed from the contract and agrees that he will no longer be purchasing the property while the seller is agreeing to allow the change of buyers. This may not be considered as an assignment, rather a change in who is purchasing the property. After the addendum is signed, we need the subsequent buyer, Mr. C, to sign the addendum accepting and agreeing to him being the sole purchaser in this transaction. Once this document has been signed and agreed to by all parties, Mr. C, the subsequent buyer, will then need to initial and date and or sign and date all of the documents that the original buyer, Mr. B, had signed and initial. This would show his acceptance and review of all the documents. These documents would include all of the original and completed documents, which are the agency disclosure brochure, a buyer representation agreement, the RE14, the real estate purchase and sell agreement, RE21, counter offer number one, the RE13, exhibit A, the inspection notice, RE10, the seller's property condition disclosure, RE25, and the lead base paint disclosure. Why would you want the new buyer, Mr. C, to review all of these documents and acknowledge them by either signing or initialing them as if he were the original buyer? Have you ever come across an attorney who professed that his client never saw the seller's property disclosure and was unaware of the issues the seller was disclosing? If we do not have proof that the new buyer was given the disclosure, then the seller may be at fault for not complying with Idaho law in making that disclosure. What about the federal requirement that the buyer be given the lead-based paint disclosure and pamphlet? Do you have proof of that? So the possible $10,000 fine is not assessed against your seller? Do you have proof that the new buyer is aware of all the terms of the purchase and sell agreement and has agreed to them? How about agreeing to the buyer representation agreement and acknowledging it? You can see that you need to make sure these other questions and concerns do not come back and cause a problem in the transaction. So the next time the topic of assigning a real estate contract in Idaho comes up, you now know what you should do. This has been another segment of Idaho Real Estate News. If you found this article useful, please share it with others. Subscribe by adding us to your Alexa Flash briefing or by sending us an email to johnston at micro, M-Y-K-R-O.com. We have a website with all of our past topics and that have been discussed. Visit the website iren.news for more information. There you can also submit topics you would like us to cover. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for more insights on forms and other real estate topics. For Idaho Real Estate News, I'm Mike Johnston. Idaho Real Estate News is updated weekly.